two days after people. Back in North America, the port of Valdez, Alaska is eerily quiet. In the time of humans, tankers came here to fill up with oil. The oil flowed 800 miles inside the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. If laid out in the lower 48, it would stretch from Chicago to Dallas. This man-made river of oil is pumped from Alaska's North Slope across three mountain ranges and 34 major rivers to holding tanks in Valdez. There are 380 million gallons of oil inside the pipeline at any given time. At its peak, the pipeline was moving about 2 million barrels a day of oil down the pipeline. The production on the North Slope has declined considerably, so it's moving about 700,000 barrels a day down the line now. The hum of the pump stations along the pipeline stops as their fuel and electricity runs out. But as hundreds of millions more gallons sit in the 800 miles of pipeline, another disaster awaits. Two hundred years after people, inland sections of the Alaska pipeline have corroded slowly in this cold climate. Here, it takes more than rusting steel to open the pipeline. In the time of humans, the many elevated sections of pipeline and their supports were designed not only to withstand the elements, but also strong Alaskan earthquakes. Two centuries later, the corroding structures are vulnerable. I imagine you will get an earthquake, and the, the pipeline, uh, if it's in the line of the earthquake, it's not going to survive. It's going to have cracks in it. And when the cracks occur, then you're going to spill everything out. But because the pieces of pipeline are in one of the coldest parts of the world, away from the devastating effects of water, they may be some of the last remains of man. I would say that's going to be one of the long-lasting artifacts that people left behind. I did a calculation if you had a really low corrosion rate. Um, many steel products would last uh, over 2,000 years, 2,500 years. 